Hey everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me for today's soap making video. Before Halloween last year, I was on one of my supplier pages and I noticed that they had some calamine powder and I immediately thought of that pink milky lotion that they used to put on us in primary school if we had any cuts on us and um, all these memories came flooding back and I thought you know what I'm gonna get some and see what I can do with it now on the same day I happened to get this powder delivered Ellen Ruth she put out a video making a calamine soap so I thought that would be a really good place to actually start now because things were so busy at the time I did put off making the soap but I did make it just before Christmas and and today I'm going to show you how I have made my calamine and goat's milk soap. Let's go. The first thing I'm going to do with this soap is I am going to sift my goat's milk powder and my calamine. And the reason being is because I've got little lumps in them and I don't want lumps of this in my soap. So I'm just going to pass it through my little sieve. My bigger sieves are actually in the shed at home. I should bring one of them down the little one does make it just that little bit trickier to pour into we'll get this sifted through so we get rid of all of those lumps Okay, so that is now all sifted. It's nice and fine. So we're gonna grab our oils here and I'm making it as one of my luxury soap bars. So we're going in for one of the big slabs, hence the big amount of um, oils here. Now, the first thing I am gonna do, cause I'm only gonna put my calamine in here, not gonna put anything else. It's gonna be very pure, simple soap. I'm going to pour the calamine and the goat's milk into my oil, give it a good mix make sure it's well combined and then we will add in our lye water and it's going to be very very simple because once that is all combined together with the lye water we will then put in our fragrance or our essential oil blend which i'll explain a little bit more about in a minute once i've finished making noise with this Okay, so that was actually quite hard to see when that actually came to emulsion. It's gone really, really creamy, but I can see just very, very faint trace lines when I'm moving my soap over, or my stick blender over the batter. So it means that we're at a very, very, very light trace. I'm gonna add in my essential oil blend. This is one I have made up myself. I did a little bit of research into the different essential oils to find ones that are generally used for skin calming um, and would make a nice scent blend. So we're not gonna be making any claims about this but I'm putting in ingredients that are known to have these sort of benefits in here I did a blend of um, chamomile Roman chamomile which has been diluted in your hoba oil so we're gonna add in a little bit of extra super fat into this with that essential oil I'm using some of that beautiful Bulgarian lavender that I got in I have also got some frankincense uh, we've got some cedarwood atlas in there and I also put in a little bit of rose geranium just to give it that little bit more of a floral sort of calming feel to it. I don't know, I feel that rose geranium always has that real calming sort of smell along with the lavender and that smells just absolutely beautiful. I'm going to get it mixed in. to stop mixing this is one of those soaps where you can actually just play with the batter there's something so calming and soothing about this this is like it has a texture of like melted ice cream it is just you know that really silky smooth sort of feel 
to it. It's absolutely beautiful. I can already feel what this soap is going to be like on the skin. Let's get as much of this goodness off of here. And then we're going to grab our split mold and we're going to pour it on in. So it is just a very, very simple, basic soap. So I got the Calamine lotion back in October and I have been procrastinating about making this soap because I didn't know whether to actually just do it plain and simple and elegant like this or whether to really get fancy and you know put in all the different additives and put in things like um, infused oils and you could really go to town on it but you also have to think about the cost of it so this is going in as one of my luxury line soaps because there are a few because there are a few ingredients in here that are a little bit more costly such as the calamine powder um, plus all those really nice essential oils but by the time I've got around to doing things like doing infusions which take time so you've got to factor in that cost and stuff like that I just decided that it was going to be way too over the top I wouldn't be able to charge the price that I would need to and the price that I do charge for the um, for my luxury soaps just wouldn't be enough to warrant putting all those beautiful extras that you could actually do so I decided to keep it nice and simple and let the actual ingredients that are in here that goat's milk the calamine the beautiful essential oils that are in here as well actually do all the talking let's get as much of this scraped out of here as I possibly can and I'm absolutely loving the color um, I've seen others making the calamine soaps. I kind of started watching other people making the calamine soaps after I'd seen Ellen Ruth make it. I literally saw her video um, the day I placed the order for the calamine lotion. It just came up in my um, feed as a video that I may like to watch. That just goes to prove that they are watching us. <laughs> <laughs> so they knew I'd actually bought some but I did start watching some other people with the calamine um, soaps and it's amazing how we all get very different colors based on where the sort of iron oxide that's in the calamine comes from so this one obviously has to get this deep rich color has a very rich iron oxide in it because sometimes they come out very pale no matter how much of the powder you actually put in. All right, we have got almost all of that scraped out. No more playing. That is done. I'm gonna leave this one sit overnight and we'll be back very soon. We'll cut it open. It's gonna be very, very plain and simple inside, but I think that this is gonna be one of those real simple, beautiful bars. Okay, so now it is confession time. While I was actually um, making this soap, I was in the middle of filming the January vlog and I was being lazy. I didn't get out the second camera and I'd kind of done some vlogging on this current camera I'm on. Then I'd made some soaps with it and then I did some more vlogging. And I think when I went to do all the, the video or transferring the videos and stuff and then deleting them i think i deleted that footage as well thinking it was part of the vlog so i do apologize but what i have got here this is the cut soap so you really didn't miss out on much of seeing me cut it because it is very plain very very simple but i absolutely love it love the color that it has gone i have got some glycerin rivers um, going through this one but i'm really not bothered about that because it really adds to the whole feel of the soap um, glycerin is a humectant and it is a byproduct in the processes of making soap or mixing oils and an alkaline base it is how glycerin is actually made and we use glycerin to moisturize our skin so i'm not worried that i've got glycerin rivers in here because i think it just adds to the whole effect also gives it just a little bit more interest in the soap as well when i cut this one it was absolutely beautiful to cut you could hear that wire slicing through the soap and you just knew that it was going to be so creamy to lather up 
um, so really looking forward to trying a bar of this one once it's sat for a day or so I went around and I trimmed all the corners put my little stamp in and because I was just so keen to try a bar of this soap I got all of those little um, soapy scraps and I bunched them all up into a ball and because this had been sitting and it already done all of its saponification I knew it was safe to use and it was going to give me a, a slight indication on how this one was going to go at, with lathering let's go and have a look so ignore all of the um, the mess in the background here but this was my piece of soap which I balled up it is a bit soft because it was literally I um, shaved the soap bunched it up and then wet it so it is really really wet but because this was over 72 hours old I knew that I could actually um, test this one um, that it had finished its saponification and I was really keen to see um, the sort of lather I was going to get and it is beautiful and creamy and it is soft and we've got these beautiful beautiful bubbles so I can't wait until this one has actually finished its whole sort of cure process see how it goes beautiful and creamy once this has finished its whole cure process I will be snuffling a bar of this and taking it home because it is just it feels so silky smooth on the skin as well and the hands feel lovely and clean after using it So again, I do apologize that I am missing that footage. Um, if you do want to know when this soap is going to be ready, come and follow me over on Instagram. If you want to know any more about how I actually created the soap, how much calamine I used and things like that, I have done a couple of posts over on the Patreon page to go with this soap um, release. Um, but other than that, I hope you have enjoyed watching how I made my calamine goat's milk soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up in any comments down below. And until the next video comes out, I hope you have a good one and I'll see you then. Bye.